What is up everyone? Welcome here to another episode on uh, the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. I'm Yelis Fass, your host, and I am as well a fellow cardiac arrest survivor. You might know it by now, you know, if you uh, have listened to quite a few episodes already, but here on the podcast I chat with other survivors to, you know, hopefully spread out some um, lessons and insights and to make you feel less alone. In this journey. Uh, I do talk occasionally also to cardiac health experts uh, to provide more information around a specific uh, health topic. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that can also be of use to, to you. Now in this episode I am talking to fellow cardiac arrest survivor Marcus and I asked him to pronounce his last name. Um, there might be a chance that I might butcher it. There's a high chance that I have butchered quite a lot of names, but my name gets butchered all the time too. So, you know, <laughs> um, but it's Marcus Lindgren. And again, I hope I pronounced that correctly. He is a fellow cardiac arrest survivor from Sweden. So he's the first uh, person from Sweden, which is always very cool to have uh, another country here in the list of survivors. Uh, and yeah, we're talking about his story, uh, how he survived his cardiac arrest and how his journey has been. He is actually so far the survivor who has uh, uh, has been the most recent uh, on his journey of surviving a cardiac arrest. He survived it eight weeks ago, so that's very, very recent. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I think he's doing quite amazing. Uh, his mindsets, his insights, his lesson, lessons that uh, I hope that you will connect with as well and that you will find uh, meaningful. Now to find anything that was mentioned in the episode, do check out the description of this episode to find the show notes as uh, that's where you can find uh, all the resources and additional things right about surviving a cardiac arrest. Uh, you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for Marcus. With that, I uh, hope that you will enjoy this episode and that you will find some insights. Um, and lessons and inspiration out of it. So please enjoy. Marcus, a warm welcome here to uh, the podcast of the to the uh, to the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. It's really good to uh, talk to you. Nice to have me. Thank you. Um, you are the first person from Sweden. So oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm honored. Yeah, it's really uh, cool for me <clears throat> to have more cardiac arrest survivors on the show from different countries so really awesome to that you also wanted to do this so thank you cool sure thank you uh i'm i'm feeling well these days i'm feeling blessed to be everywhere so i'm blessed mm. to be here as well yeah yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> mostly i go into these conversations kind of you know blind not knowing much about the, the person's story i kind of like that mm -hmm. so i don't know that much about you know your story could you yeah. just share with me and everyone listening when and where did you had your cardiac arrest? Sure. So, um, well, first, we, we live in a town called Luleå. In, it's in the north of, of Sweden. <clears throat> and uh, we, uh, we compete, both me and my girlfriend compete at the highest level in dog agility. Uh, so, we so cool. compete all over Europe with, with our dogs. Wow. And... Um, so, so this was actually at at a competition in uh, in Norway. Uh, we we went there on the twenty eighth of of March. So this is only well, it's like it's exactly eight weeks ago today, actually. Or, oh, whoa! Well, two days ago. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait! So Your still... cardiac arrest is super recent. Yes, only eight weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's it's been. Crazy. It's been quite a wild bunch of weeks, yeah. <laughs> Eight weeks. <clears throat> yeah, so we went there like on the 27th of, uh, of yeah. March and we, uh, and we competed there uh, during the day. We went to a place called Kongsvinge. It's a small, small town like an, an hour north of Oslo. Um, so it's, it's a 14-hour drive from uh, where we live yeah so 
so we were there and we competed on on Thursday and everything was perfect. Uh, everything went well. I like nothing weird, nothing wrong, or yeah, business as usual. Um, and uh, we uh, we went to our hotel after the competition, which was in the middle of of the city there, and. Um, uh, we went for dinner, um, had quite a late dinner, like around nine o'clock, something like that. Yeah. And um, uh, we had our dogs. We had all our seven dogs with us. Uh, so they were at the, in the hotel room on the third, st- third story. And um, uh, yeah, like the last thing I remember was me standing at the, in the restaurant waiting to, to pay for the dinner. And uh, after that, like everything is just blank. I have no no memories further on the evening w- whatsoever. After that, we yeah we paid. We went to our hotel room. We uh, got our dogs. We went for a walk. Um, got back into the hotel. Uh, watched some TV. Went to bed. And uh, yeah, everything was still perfectly fine. Um, everything was normal. And um, pretty much midnight, um, I was there with my girlfriend, of course, and she woke up. Uh, somehow she woke up thinking I was snoring or like making weird noises. And um, like usually, since we have a lot of dogs, like if, if someone of them makes some sounds at night, I'm always the one that wakes up always she she sleeps through most um but somehow she she woke up and she heard like i was making weird noises and she uh-huh. turned on the light in the hotel room and at that moment i just stopped i got yeah. silent and yeah then i was out of it i stopped breathing my eyes was just staring up into the roof and uh, she couldn't wake me up or contact me and she realized like oh shit this is this is bad and um yeah she she did cpr on me uh called uh emergency number in norway and uh, uh actually they have two numbers there so she called the same number that's in sweden and then you arrive at the police in instead and s- somehow for some reason, they said that that you've arrived at police. You need to call one one two one one three, and she she just hung up and called another the other number instantly. Mm. But she she had time to tell tell them like we are here, we are at this hotel, uh, we need an ambulance, and well, she just hung up, and they they actually sent the police instantly as well. And uh, uh, they were closer than the hospital or, or the ambulance. So they arrived like after approximately five minutes. Uh, there, there was a, a heart starter at the hotel as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, so she did CPR on me for like around five minutes before the police arrived. And then they took over and, um, uh, yeah, like the first five minutes, she, she managed like a freaking superhero. Uh, she, she couldn't get me out of bed. She tried to like pull me out of bed, but she couldn't get me down on the floor. So she had to do the CPR with me lying in bed. I mean, it's hard enough to do it on the floor on someone, but even harder if you're in a yeah, soft, yeah. soft bed. Yeah, it's true. Um, but and like five minutes police arrived another five minutes uh paramedics arrived and uh, they think or they 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 calculate that i had that my heart stopped for around between 10 and 15 minutes something like that uh <clears throat> and i was shocked twice uh like before my heart started beating again and uh, yeah uh Everything happened with also all our dogs in the hotel room as well. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, the dogs knew something was 
like serious because uh, normally like if we 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 usually joke about that we don't have any uh we, we're not allowed to dance in the kitchen because if we do that like the dogs go crazy they they, <laughs> they bark they go absolutely mad yeah um but during all of this in the hotel room none of the dogs said a word wow. uh, like my my oldest dog he he, he laid next to the bed while she was doing CPR and wow. said said nothing. So, yeah, they knew. <laughs> Very weird. <clears throat> so, so yeah, that's the, the first part of it. So mm -hmm. they got me to the ambulance and there was a, a hospital in that city. Uh, we went there fast and I was just, they did a CT scan on me and they initially thought that I had a, a brain hemorrhage. Um, and I was immediately transferred to, towards Oslo instead, to their like major hospital there, the university hospital in Oslo. And um, um, yeah, they, they did new CT scans and MR scans instantly on me there. And they realized that I didn't have a brain hemorrhage at least and um yeah so i was in the icu there and in in uh, medical induced coma for a little bit over two days approximately something like that um and um yeah so so no memories whatsoever about anything happened during those days and uh uh, yes, like when I was when I woke up, uh, I couldn't really. It was hard to to digest what happened, and I couldn't understand like how my parents could be at the hospital, and uh, Anya, my my girlfriend's parents, were at the hospital as well. And for me, yeah, no time has had passed for me, and I knew my parents was up in the north of Finland skiing on a, on a skiing um, holiday. And all of a sudden I was just there uh, with everyone. So it was quite, quite a thing to like, try to wrap your head around. <laughs> um, so we, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy it happened where it happened. I mean, everything has been the stars have really been aligned for, yeah, for this yeah. to go as well as it has and it has to yeah yeah first of all we, we shouldn't even have been staying at that uh hotel usually we go to this place two times a year and we're very good friends with the organizers so we usually stay at their place and uh, they live about 35 to 40 minutes outside of the city like straight out in the woods and uh like at least half an hour from any emergency personnel. And uh, Enya, uh, she just changed her mind like two days prior. Like, oh no, uh, I don't want to go there. Uh, we'll skip it this time. We'll take a hotel instead. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad I wasn't stubborn. and like, no, it will be fun. Let's go there. And then we just took the hotel instead because yeah, there's no chance I would have been here uh, without if we would have gone there no chance at all so yeah um mm. it's yeah luck and everything <laughs> how is it actually for you to share this now because i've never had someone who had it so recently on the show yet how is it for you to yeah share this <clears throat> yeah i've been talking a lot about it uh, yeah, yeah. this is like, yeah. this is the second actually podcast I do about it. Uh, right. I did one in, in Sweden as well for, th there's been a lot of, um, like news around this in the, in the dog sport and agility community. Cause both me and my girlfriend are very well known in, in that space. And it's spread like wildfire after it happened. And, um, so, so yeah, but I, I haven't felt like any issues to talk about anything. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel traumatic to me actually. 
um, somehow. I'm almost afraid that I somehow someday will realize that, oh, like that it's going to hit me. But at the same time, I feel I'm so thankful like for, for everything. And uh, uh, I said like very early on that I really, really want this to have a positive spin in the end. Like I don't want this the everything that's happened to go to waste or that it doesn't exp- in, inspire someone else or and it, there's been so much good coming out of it uh, so far like uh, both around my like really close friends and, and family and but i've been seeing stuff all over the world in the agility community where people they, yeah they, they buy hard starters to their hole or they 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 take their uh, CPR classes everywhere. They like yeah, nice. people are really, really taking it yeah. seriously and getting a lot of knowledge and uh, training themselves, and that feels like amazing. Um, so, so yeah, I I have no issues like talking about it. It's uh, I see it as like it's therapeutic both for me and a lot of times for the one I'm talking to i've had a lot of like one one-on-one talks with friends that maybe i haven't had spent like really deep conversations with before um but this kind of yeah it triggers a lot of that and uh, it opens yeah, the door uh, yeah it opens the door for a lot of things and like yeah. i could even say that I, I i'm getting to know my friends even even better sometimes uh just by talking about it and um yeah so so it feels good and and as long as i see like me opening up about it and talking about it um if that results to like one person taking a cpr course and saving one person then i'm all for it yeah yeah like, yeah that's yeah, you've made a huge change. For. yeah yeah mm-hmm. <clears throat> but how do you feel so today it- after eight weeks because it's so recent like yeah. how do you feel physically mentally yeah, yeah <clears throat> physically I, I feel strong like i have no issues with like um um like strength really sure yeah mm-hmm. um i had um um well, well we'll get to that as well but um that i noticed the most is like in brain fatigue. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can't like I couldn't work as usual or spend a day in front of the computer or reading or uh, I really need to like pace myself to save energy for for stuff. Like if I want to go with friends to have a dinner and talk to them for a few hours, then like I need to uh, adjust the day accordingly. Like I need to. I, I usually go have a nap a couple, two, three times a day just to rest my brain. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, I'm learning. Uh, it's quite frustrating because I'm used to like just going all out during most days onto the next thing. And so it's a little bit frustrating that I feel like, okay, I really need to, to have patience with myself and realize that, oh, okay, you, I don't have the same mental um, like uh, capacity as as I did before because my 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 body wants more than my brain at the moment. Um, yeah, and so so th- that's what I'm noticing the the most like brain fatigue, and I have some issues with uh, like the sensation in the left part of my body because. When I woke up uh, from from being in the uh, in the respirator, um, like quite quickly, I managed to to complain that oh, I was touching my left arm. Yeah, and I complained to to the doctors and everyone there that I said like, it feels like it feels like I'm touching someone else's arm. Like I couldn't I couldn't feel my own arm. <clears throat> and yeah of course 
saying that uh, everything went so fast at the hospital because they realized I was having a stroke as well. Oh, really? So, so yeah, so it it, uh, it came right after I woke up pretty much. Um, so new scans and everything, and they could see that I had a, um, a stroke like on the right side of my brain. And uh, yeah, so they, they had to sedate me again. And uh, they were quite a bit worried there because I had a lot of uh, a lot of hemorrhage in my lungs from the CPR. I had blood in my lungs and my left lung was nearly like a third collapsed uh, from, uh, from blood and yeah, stuff. And, um, and they had to give me, um, medicine for like a blood thinning. Yep. So they had to kind of, I know they said to my parents and my girlfriend that I one like, yeah, we can, we can give him new lungs, but we can't give him a new brain. So they kind of, yeah, you have to weigh out like the negatives and the positives yep. with that, but they, they had to get rid of the uh, of this of the stroke, yeah. and uh, um, so right after that we had another like twenty four hours, which when everything was up in the air again, <clears throat> and they didn't like know what was gonna happen really. But yeah, everything went okay once again somehow, and um, yeah, so so that's one thing that I'm like feeling now strength it's fine no problem but I have a like I have a cold coffee here for example like me holding that really tightly um make me it's make me makes me think that I'm I get a burning sensation mm. like I have a hard time what's uh, hot and what's cold and Is like it nerve uh, damage uh, no it's not nerve damage but it's a part of my brain where I had the stroke uh, that's affected like the sensation on, on the left side. So yeah. from what I've been told and from what I, what I understand, it's that like new parts of my brain, it's learning uh, the the sensation from the left side. New parts has to like take over. Yeah. yeah. And like we haven't really figured it out yet. So so yeah, yeah. me doing this with like two hands, yeah. that's that's easier. It makes me like understand that okay, this is cold. Yeah. But if I like don't look at it and I don't um, really think what I'm doing, um, then I get like the wrong sensation. I could think that something that's cold actually is burning my hand. Do you have to do any but it's exercises becoming... for this? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do some like uh, really really light stuff. It's um, like you could take like a feather and. Yeah. Pretty much train your sensation. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, I use I use my dogs actually, like take my hands through their fur and stuff like that. Uh so so yeah, and and it's also like a waiting game. Um it's been it's it's a lot better now than it was a few weeks ago, but like the last part of things could take yeah. I could take a year. Uh yeah, but yeah. It's not a huge issue. It's just a little bit annoying. I can live with it. Uh, so it's 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 fine. It's uh, yeah. Uh, I can't complain. <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt the conversation between me and Marcus. This will just take a short moment. If you want to support this project, which will help me a lot to continue doing this, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. And one way is by buying a piece of our merch, which you know. Maybe you've noticed my uh, t-shirt here. This is a new design that we have uh, for our Heart Warrior t-shirts. The t-shirts are, you know, in a variety of different colors. They are organic, they are made of quality material, and they look just awesome. (laughs) Or that's what I think, at least. We have other merch, right? We have our Heart Warrior mugs, which, if the camera zooms in, look pretty amazing too. Uh, It's with the same design. Uh, We have different designs for our mugs, our t-shirts, and we also have pullovers, if you want to pull over. Uh, So yeah, check out the merch that we have, and maybe you will find something that will suit your style. Now, if you are not so much interested in our merch, but you do want to support the project, 
You can also uh, treat me on a Ko-fi, which is a platform. Uh, it's basically the same like leaving a donation and you can buy me a virtual coffee. Now, I will not buy a coffee from that as I don't drink coffee anymore because uh, of my heart, but I will use that money, uh, well, to better this project. Now, in the description, I will put a link uh, that will take you to the page where you can check out our merch or leave a donation. Or you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved to find the same page. Okay, having said all that, let's return back to the conversation between me and Marcus. The stroke and the cardiac arrest, did it do any damage? Like any permanent damage? Or is it all in a state that he could heal and get better? It, it, it could probably heal and get 100% good, probably. Uh, like, like your the lungs? sensation of things. Yeah, your my lungs? lungs are okay. Yeah, yeah, my lungs are okay. I okay. uh, haven't had any issues with them. And I've been competing actually since uh, since the everything happened. I, yeah, it's been like one of the first things I talked about uh, was when, like, when can I compete again? Because I knew in the back of my head, five mm. weeks from from then, we had the national tryout in Sweden for, for the national team. And uh, yeah, I was just, I don't think I've ever in my life been so focused on one thing ever. Like my mind was set and I decided super early on like i'm gonna give myself the chance to be there at the tryouts like um i wouldn't take not that i wouldn't take no for an answer but like i asked my doctor and i showed him i talked about agility and showed him what it was and, and like i want to do this is it possible in five weeks <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he was like oh you know <laughs> it's nice that you have goals and that you're positive and, and so on but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to wait with that for a while. This is this is gonna take a while, and um, I think I think that just somehow spurred me on. Uh, that uh, like I knew from the beginning that of course I'm not gonna do anything stupid. Like sure, I wouldn't sure. do anything that feels that doesn't feel good or, or or makes me worried somehow or or scared or like that that. Uh, like physically something is wrong and still do it. Uh, but I could not like the thought of someone else telling me that, no, this is not a possibility. You can't do it. <clears throat> and just accept that and like flat on my back and like, okay, well, he says that it can't be done. So I'm not going to try. Yeah. That wasn't an option. Like at like least, that. Yeah, at least I'm going to do everything I can. And if it doesn't work out, like if I come there and I realize that, okay, this is not possible. My lungs are not okay or I don't feel right in my body or I can't run or, yeah, could have been a, a million reasons why I shouldn't have been able to compete. Um, then I would at least have felt like, okay, I, I gave you it a tried shot. It. And I, yeah, yeah, you yeah, gave I it Yeah, I tried all. it. Yeah. 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 And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I did not want to like realize or just accept defeat without even trying. I that, like that wasn't an option. Uh, so well. I think like, yeah, um, the, the date you had to decide for the competition and pay the fee to, to go there was, I was still in the hospital then. I hadn't <laughs> even come, yeah. came, come home still. Yeah. So I was still there and, um, uh i was still waiting for my icd to be put in oh yeah uh, i knew that i had like well um uh, i think it was maybe four or five days before that uh that i had to decide about the competition and my girlfriend was staying at the, uh, a hotel nearby and uh, she also knew like this was a thing on my mind and uh, yeah, when she came that morning, I told her like, yeah, I've, I've, uh, uh, I paid the fee, so <laughs> we're going, <laughs> or we're gonna, tr we're gonna try to go. At yeah, least. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and um, yeah, uh, like I said, I'm, 
I'm stunned by what you can achieve when with that focus on something and I've never felt like that before. It's it's been an eye opening for like for what's possible really at least for me. <clears throat> and uh, uh yeah, so I'm quite proud of, proud of myself for you should be for yeah. doing it and for for not like just taking kind of no for an ass and even if, even if they didn't say like no uh, straight away but this is also of course connected to that they, it's my my cardiac arrest is idiopathic so they they don't know we haven't found any reason for it so <clears throat> so i mean everything could have been different if i had like a severe heart condition that they found and then it might have been impossible to go there but now my heart haven't didn't skip a beat since we got to the hospital and every test we've ever done came back negative and they haven't been able to replicate any arrhythmia whatsoever um so so yeah we don't know why it happened there's a reason for it uh, sure. I mean, it's not just chance but uh, i don't know why yeah so uh i'm gonna ask more about that but first i'm curious how did the how did the championship go actually it went well um yeah okay like my you compete in different sizes but depending on how big the dog is so you have okay. large small medium uh -huh. and uh, uh, my girlfriend competes in both the large class and the small class and i compete in the small class what is large? Like, what kind of dog size are we talking about? Like, if the if the dogs like like border collar, like if you're above yeah. fifty centimeters, uh, that's height, large. Then you're large, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Um, yeah. so it's it's not a weight thing; it's just how high the dog is. Ah. So it's, the small dogs are like up till thirty. Uh, is it thirty? Thirty-eight, I think. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so she won in the large class, oh, and good. she won in the small class. And and I came third in the small class. Uh, nice. So so it's wow. like the the top of uh, it's a Swedish elite that competes there, of course. So so we are now going to to um, to both the world championship, which is actually close to you in Belgium. Yes, uh, yes. In October, yeah, yeah. 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 And we're competing in the European Championships that in the it's in the UK this year, and we have wow. a Nordic Championship as well. So, so we're competing both uh, individually and teams for for uh, the World Championships. So that's yeah, it's that's it's insane. It, it could not have gone any better, and it's it's so wild. Uh, that is super wild, especially yeah. you know after what happened to you. Yeah, <laughs> like. Uh, Wow. Actually, it's 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 quite like just being there. Even if I would have been on the sidelines, just watching, uh, that would have been a a win. And just me starting one of the runs because this was the competition is it's one of the tougher during the year. It's four days in a row, and you compete two two uh, two runs per day. And uh, so I mean, just starting one run would have been a a, a win uh, so somehow i i felt like i've already won just by yeah. being there yeah and i took a day at a time and just uh, of course i had to like adapt a little bit i stayed out of like i didn't stay in the hall during the competition i, I, I was resting in the car a lot and didn't like waste my energy talking to a lot of people because I knew that going there, every, I would be the elephant in the room uh, there. Like everybody knew what has had happened and everybody would have wanted to talk about it. So we, uh, we put yeah, out a, lot a of post energy. like in our, yeah, yeah, I would have never. Like we put a post in our social medias before going there. Like, just yes, please, this weekend, could we have a, like a normal competitive weekend uh we cannot spend our energy talking about this this weekend uh, and people were very respectful and uh, so I ha yeah had no issues whatsoever just i didn't have to talk to people about it i could rest uh, in my car just 
just chill, save my brain, save my energy. Uh, so, but yeah, it was an amazing weekend, but also very mentally tough. Like this was worse. Yeah. Yeah. Since like the first night there, uh, and that's something I like, everything is still so new for me. Like I'm doing everything uh, for the first time. Yeah. And also with the ICD, uh, like, right? Yeah. And like, so that's also a new thing in your body. Yeah. That, that and to. just I like the first night at the tryout competition, I knew like, okay, last time I went to a competition and I stayed at the hotel. I woke up three days later right. after I died. <laughs> right. For yeah. 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 Oof. And I was there again, only, only five, six weeks later, uh, staying at a hotel competing again. And like, yeah, uh, I was a bit, a bit nervous going to I, bed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's normal, I actually I slept well. And yeah, somehow I've been really lucky with my sleep. I haven't had any issues sleeping or night mares or stuff like that, that I heard a lot of people have. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. I had a lot of hallucinations at the hospital though, but it, that was only for the first like two, two days. Maybe I saw a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh. Yeah. And I remember one, one day I, I was in the bed, of course, it was still in the intensive care unit. <clears throat> so I was hooked up to everything and I couldn't leave my bed and, and everything. But I, I went, no, remember I opened my eyes and I saw a soldier standing um, to the left of my bed, like by my legs. And he was standing on a, on a landmine, like in his full, full gear and everything. Yes, but yeah, it was very, very weird. <laughs> But they disappeared and and no nightmares um, to this day, actually. And I'm sleeping very good. So I'm super thankful for that as well. Okay. Happy to hear. Yeah. Okay. I never had any, any hallucinations or nightmares either. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it the was tiredness. quite a weird thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that was because of the brain injury or because uh, of anything no, I, of medication? It's medication yeah 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 <clears throat> so medication and being in the um like in the respiratory device i've heard that it's quite common that you uh, get uh, nightmares and so on uh during that uh, or and afterwards mm. uh but for me like those those days uh they don't they don't exist for me uh, at all it's like people ask me like how what was the feeling like from when you were gone like do you have any do you know how it is to like be dead yeah uh -huh. and then some somehow it feels like i i don't i i i know uh, but it's just complete darkness and there's no time whatsoever, like just nothing, nothing. So that's quite fascinating as well. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like going to sleep, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, but I think like sleeping that you, you can somehow have a, almost like a sense of time that you kind of know if you've been sleeping for a long time or a short time. Uh, and this was just, this was just nothingness, like really n nothing. Uh, vacuum and just pitch black um, somehow. So Does the, the thought and feeling of that terrify you or how did it feel or how does it feel? No, yeah. actually, I've been thinking a lot about that and I realized mm -hmm. uh, like I'm not afraid of it mm -hmm. at all. Okay. There's There's just... I don't know what to be afraid of because for to me that's nothing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like they only, if I think about death now, I, of course you you like I don't think you you can't not think about it when you've been through something like this. Sure. Um yeah. Like the the main thing that kind of gets me 
it's just a feeling of what others around me would go through. Yeah. Uh, and I'm kind of scared for that uh, in a way, but I don't feel any, I don't fear death somehow at all. Uh, not for myself, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. more for the feeling of what it would do to like uh, my family and friends and stuff like that. Just seeing people talking to them now, like uh, after what's happened and how this everything made kind of them, them feel somehow thinking what it would have been like if I wasn't here at all. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I, d I don't fear it for, for me at all. Um, so yeah. And yeah. I've been thinking, I think a lot about it. And I just come to that conclusion. Like, I can't be afraid of nothing. Yeah, somehow. I think that thought could be very ter <laughs> terrifying for some people, though. Probably. Right? Some yeah, people I really think want something to be there. Yeah, I think, like, most of the time, you're af afraid of the unknown. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you're afraid of what you don't know. And I feel like I know this somehow. Mm -hmm. And I would have probably been like, if someone told me that, Hey, you're going to have a cardiac arrest and you're going to be dead for a while. And this is going to happen. I mean, then you would be terrified, but then you're terrified of, of what you don't know. Kind of, you don't know what it's going to be like or what's going to happen or how you're going to feel or how you're going to react or stuff like that. But I think, yeah, most of the time, I think you're f afraid of uh, what you don't know. So it's, yeah, it's quite an interesting thought, really. <laughs> it, it's an, it's a podcast of its own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, and okay, so they don't know why you had your cardiac arrest, but I assume they might still want to run some tests or are they yeah. now like we're done? Oh. No, we're not done. Uh, we uh, like uh, pretty much every like physical test and everything has been done in Norway. In Sweden, we have uh, a different kind of like rules around uh, gene, um, like checking your gene sequences and stuff like that. Uh, so here it's it's mandatory. Like if you suffer a cardiac arrest and you're under the age of forty, mm -hmm. uh, you always do. Um, uh, what it's called um like like a gene uh, you check a dna it. test uh, dna test yeah, yeah. dna test mm -hmm. uh in norway they don't always do that um oh. <clears throat> okay. but in sweden so uh, when i after i've gotten home and i've uh met with my uh cardiologist here and so i'm waiting for for dna test here it will probably happen within a month or two but i'm still waiting for that and of course, I will continue to go do checkups and uh, uh, like, I think it was one week or two, two weeks ago, I also got my, the monitor for my ICD. So I have a... Oh, the home have, monitor? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I have a Boston Scientific um, uh, Resonate, I think it's, yeah, Resonate. Yeah, I have exactly the and same. And then I got the... Uh, yeah. So um, then, and then the monitor, yeah. So I have that in my bedroom now as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think, but like a third, uh, every third or six month, I think I'm going to visit the doctor at least <clears throat> uh, to just check on things. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else uh, they are going to do. Probably some more tests. And, uh, but, yeah, at the moment, I'm quite like somehow content with like, okay, maybe maybe it's going to take five years before, before we figure out why it happened. And at the moment, at least how I'm feeling now, it's, uh, it doesn't really bother me somehow. I'm okay with it at the moment. And um, maybe, I don't know, since it's everything is so new, uh, maybe it changes in a month or two um we'll we'll see it's uh it's uh actually it's like 
one thing that I've been thinking a lot about that I'm kind of scared about, or not scared like physical for a thing or stuff like that, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> at the moment, like mentally, I feel I'm so thankful for, for everything uh, and like how I'm feeling and that my body has to um, dealt with everything so well and um, that I'm feeling so, so good and uh, yeah. yeah, but I'm... I just don't want to go back to like, uh, uh, like kind of. For, I don't want to forget about it and and like go back to the normal somehow. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but like the amount of gratefulness that you have in a way. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Because um, uh -huh. I think a lot of the times, like if someone in your close vicinity or like friends or someone. It, someone maybe worst case scenario like someone dies and you realize like okay life is short and uh, you need to like appreciate what you have and everything <clears throat> and i'm sure everyone is guilty of that somehow like thinking or saying that and then five weeks later or a month yeah, later yeah. you're back to normal again yeah uh, mm -hmm. you've forgotten all about it mm -hmm. and like the way this makes me feel now and uh yeah, I, for me, at least, I hope that I don't uh, kind of forget about it in six months or whatever. I think, I think you will have quite a lot of reminders all the time, right? For example, yeah, I think so too. When, when I wake up and I look at, at myself in the mirror and I see my ICD, mm -hmm. I'm again reminded of what happened to yeah. me. When I'm at a doctor appointment with my cardiologist and we talk about my heart again, I'm reminded again. So I think yeah. there's going to be reminders in your life to think back about what happened to you and maybe connect that with that, yeah, you should be grateful. Oh, well, or that it could have been different, the story. Right? Mm -hmm. I think, like, now you have... Uh, I realized, like, one major thing, uh, like, how much time you spend on... Uh, on like little things that bothers you or that gets to you somehow and like now those stuff is so so like it's it's nothing uh you can always compare that to i could have been underground and then then it's it's just oh yeah it'll sort itself out it's fine it's puts it in perspective yeah, yeah it puts it in perspe perspective and um yeah feels like kind of kind of a weight off my shoulders actually like stuff like that just it doesn't at the least at this moment it doesn't bother me uh at all like it could use used to um so yeah we'll see what the future holds but at the moment uh mentally i feel i feel great actually uh and um in a way, in a way, almost better than before. Yeah. Uh, Why do you say that? Like frust. Well, just because the 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 perspective has changed okay. for me a lot, okay. and yeah. it, it's it feels like it's so much easier to to uh, like stay on the good side of things and just not be affected by little things or or yeah, it just it's nice to be grateful. Uh, and uh, yeah, and to, to not and to say to deeply, that I haven't been before. Uh -huh. To deeply feel that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I think I'm I'm guilty of saying that a lot of times, like during my life. Like, yeah, I'm thankful and I'm grateful, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever felt it like yes, uh, like I do now. Yeah, you yeah, feel and, it now. Yeah, and and that's. Yeah, it's a it's a big difference to, uh, from saying it to, to feeling it like that, <clears throat> and I think that it's really hard to to explain to someone. Of like, course, that hasn't that that it hasn't been through this. Yeah, because uh, I think I, I mean I know that I've said it a lot of times, but I have never felt it like this. So I'm I don't kind know. of assuming. Yeah, I don't know if you can truly feel it like you and I and other cardiac arrest survivors have 
if you haven't went through through something as life changing as this in a way, uh, yeah. or as acutely showing that life can end and that your life yeah. has ended, but it's well restarted again. So I don't think you could really convey that message, or you can't really convey that feeling. I guess. No, to exactly. Other people you can have not went through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because like every conversation that I've had about this with people and. Yeah, I say it and I kind of know when I say it that it's not um, that it's not enough, kind of. Like, it's, I can't explain that feeling to to the extent of how I'm feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really hard to explain uh, unless you've been there, I think. I guess for many, this is like the big blessing in disguise right after a cardiac arrest that there is this change in perspective often and seeing yeah. the difference between what's important and what doesn't really matter so much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's quite interesting because I've been like, it only goes like maybe a few days between stuff like that. And that maybe affects someone else in, in, in some way. And I have to like, think or maybe like I want to say but what the hell it doesn't matter <clears throat> it doesn't matter at all but I know it matters for them uh, but yeah it's uh, it's definitely a big big difference uh, feeling it and yeah it's interesting it's nice to talk with someone that like you know <laughs> okay we have the same perspective on, on, yeah, on, yeah. on it yeah, yeah and it's it's really weird <laughs> yeah uh, by the way, like, just curious, but you take medication or what did they do for you? Yeah, I, I only eat uh, a blood thinning, trom, trom, trom bill. I don't know if there's any other, like... A blood thinner? Uh, yeah, blood thinner. Okay. Um, so it's it's uh, to mitigate, like, risk of blood clots or... Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so, so that's the only thing I'm... Uh, I got at the moment and uh, we'll see uh if that continues that i'm yeah that i'm stoked about it <clears throat> the, sure the less the better <laughs> of course i've been offered like uh, stuff for for the like nerve things yeah for for my left side but the like the side effects of, of those are it affects your energy quite a lot and like yeah i'm uh, that's the last thing I wanna uh, get rid of. Um, I get it. So yep. this is just it's it's not an issue for me. Um, so so it's it's not on the table. But at the moment, uh, blood thinning is it's the only thing I'm I'm, I'm having. And then you have an ICD. Other than that, like you have an ICD or or an SICD. Like ICD. where is your? Okay, so yours yeah, is on the it's... chest. Yeah, I think yeah. you could see it through my shirt yeah, yeah, yeah. almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. quite, it's quite, uh, it's quite big actually. Mm -hmm, it's bigger mm -hmm. than I thought. Oh, oh, my iPhone is talking to me. <laughs> she wants to join. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's yeah, it's it's quite it's quite large and uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a weird thing to be bionic now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but I've been getting it, used to that as well. Yeah kind of How like is working out and yeah it's uh, like we have a gym here at home um <clears throat> and like last week i tried to uh, i've done my like first chest sessions and, and figuring that out and uh, um yeah it's been it's been going well like i i of course i notice it a lot and uh, um like <laughs> I hurt myself like uh, I think it was yesterday. I was laying in my bed and uh, I held my phone above my head. Oh like, yeah, scrolling around. <laughs> and then, I, then I dropped it, dropped the phone, yeah. and just like the edge of the phone just hit me straight uh, on it. And it hurts like a like a peep. Yeah, that has happened to uh, me too once. It hurt. It yeah. hurts. It's so very sometimes, sensitive. like you forget about it, or you like accidentally yeah. punch it, or yeah. <laughs> It it hurts, uh, yeah. but 
I've heard uh, they said like 13 years battery life or something like ridiculous like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, uh, I think I would actually, if I would have the choice to between like half the size or and half the battery life, I think I would have, I would probably have chosen a smaller one mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, exchanged sense. it for like every five years or something like that. Cause I mean, the surgery was, wasn't, wasn't bad. I thought it was okay. And, uh, um, yeah, just, it's, it's a bit big. And, and I, I think I would have chosen a smaller one with shorter battery life than, than a larger one, actually. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. But hopefully in the future, right, we can get to that, uh, yeah. like a uh, smaller ones. Yeah. I thought the, the other podcast you did with, um, uh, I, oh, I can't dog? remember the name of, yeah, exactly. About the ICDs? Uh, <clears throat> yes, it was super good because, yeah, I realized quite quickly after all of this, it's been very hard to like find really good information. <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, somehow I, I stumbled upon your podcast in like the, in a group on Facebook <clears throat> and, and then I found those episodes as well and listened to all of them. And, uh, yeah, um, uh, very good episode. So if people listening haven't listened to that, they should, should go yeah. and have a listen. I will put it in the show notes, but, uh, yeah, thanks. Good to hear that you liked the episodes. <clears throat> yeah. And it's been like just finding information. I think a lot of people struggle with that as well. Uh, and it's easy to Google and find bad information and maybe like, yeah, like I, I've been pretty much doing everything like the usual stuff. I've been running chainsaws. I've been cutting the grass. I've been doing like, uh, yeah, everything. And you can somehow found, find information about, no, don't run your chainsaw. Don't, uh, yeah, don't it's do this and yeah, the information yeah, it's a lot is mixed of mis- sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But very good episode. Yeah, and the thing is that I mean, you know, people have a lot of questions just around their cardiac arrest and their ICD, and you don't have so much time with your cardiologist, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. And yeah. You go on the internet, uh, and there's a lot of mixed info, so it's it's confusing. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah, and I think also like when people talk on the internet about like they talk about their medications, they talk about all kinds of stuff that they are not allowed to or they are allowed to or whatever. But um, I think it, somehow people they don't talk talk about like their underlying maybe illness or all have different kind of heart issues and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it's really hard to like compare yourself to a it's lot true. of others because it's so individually uh, and uh, people just taking everything they they read somehow so yeah yeah you're right marcus i have one more question for you if that's okay yeah yeah sure um or wait let me let me make two questions let me ask two more questions um after eight weeks now you know still very you know, recent all this, but what do you still feel is very hard to communicate to the people around you, like your family, friends, doctors, just, yeah. Um, I think sometimes it's hard to understand, to, to explain like the way, because like talking to a lot of people or, or being in a, at a dinner or, or like sometimes I've been trying to explain like how all of a sudden, how it's hard to me to follow a a conversation with a lot of people or how that information like process differently in my head now than, than, than before. Um, uh, So that's like one thing I I can try to explain it with words, but it's, it feels like I have a really hard time putting that into words uh, somehow. And, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, like 
it's hard to explain how the brain works normally and all of a sudden it's mm. it's a bit different uh yeah and and i'm still learning so it's like it's 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 so new and um like really um i i think i just have to kind of accept that maybe i can't explain everything and uh, that at least for now uh maybe people around me are gonna have to be okay with that i can't like explain uh everything um in a way that that they understand it or 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 so but um yeah and and uh, just what else um mm -hmm. if there's something more right yeah um i think like sometimes i'm 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 talking and uh like uh, i lose my train of thoughts somehow like i know i started to to explain something like i know kind of where i want to go with with uh, uh what i'm saying um but i lose track of it somehow and um uh, i think sometimes you can just appear like you don't listen like like if i'm talking to people they could think that i'm not listening uh, <clears throat> even though like you're trying really hard it's just it the what i'm hearing uh it's not sticking in the same way like it used to yeah yeah um yeah. so that's kind of hard to explain like yes i am listening and i'm trying to to like make sense of this uh, <clears throat> but it's just it's kind of bouncing off my my mind at the moment um so that's quite a weird thing uh, and it's also like i notice it's more when i'm tired uh like after a long conversation or or stuff like that it, it's it's more noticeably um um but yeah it's also a thing like uh, i think it will get better i hope so um, I, I mean, I can only speak from my own experience, but uh, I mean, when I was eight weeks in, I was having a lot of memory issues still too. I, or mm -hmm. I mean, like, like um, a lot of fatigue. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Also, that my short-term memory didn't work super good. Yeah. Uh, so, but I need to write a lot of things down as well. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, like, I but know it gets better. So. Yeah. This is the great thing about your brain. Like it is quite plastic. It can, you know, heal itself quite well. Uh so it's just a matter of time, which is just patience, right? Which is yeah. frustrating to have. Yeah, it, um, it is. <laughs> like but pacing knowing, myself, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. And especially what you said in the beginning, right? Knowing what you could easily do before all this and now mm -hmm. I mean, having the physical capacity of it still, but like the the mental drain, yeah, uh, yeah. making it so hard to do it like normally, that's yeah. so frustrating because you compare yeah, it's yourself. Very frustrating, like yeah. knowing you want to have you have five things you want to do today, mm. like yeah, I want to wash the car and do that and do that and whatever, but like like knowing almost beforehand, like yeah, I'm, I won't have the energy for that. Yes, <clears throat> uh, that's really annoying um makes you so, feel old so <laughs> yeah it, it does and it's like yeah like i had a dinner with friends uh, the other week and like just knowing that okay i'm gonna have to rest pretty much the whole afternoon uh to be able to to make it through a dinner from eight till like a couple of hours yeah knowing mm -hmm. i was going there with there's going to be music. We're going to be eight people there. There's going to be a lot of talking and a lot of questions and yeah, stuff like it was the first time I really like met kind of my close group friends after everything. So just knowing like, okay, I need to sleep during pretty much the whole day to, <clears throat> to make it through that. Uh, just very annoying. Uh, as a young person. Yeah. As a young yeah. person, you don't want to think about those things, right? No. But again, I can say, that likely this is going to be just for some months and through, through the next months it's going to get better and better. Probably. 
probably yeah so i'm having like a long summer uh summer vacation i'm i'm on sick leave sick leave from from work uh all the way through august and uh, yeah i'll take this time to just um uh get better continue to get better and learn and yeah um um see what else i can do that maybe help someone else out or um spread information and yeah yeah mm. make it worthwhile i'm more than sure that you will do that i mean yeah. after eight weeks you're already talking <laughs> on a podcast mm. about this so that's pretty yeah. amazing <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, it yeah. feels feels good that uh, hopefully like someone else yeah. like me finds this and uh, like yeah, yeah uh, listen to this and um, just maybe knows that okay uh it happens to you're not alone like uh, you'll be okay and uh, cuz there's a lot of like negatives uh when, when you like you search around and it's 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 not very often you run into someone like okay this actually wow this person achieved this and done that and it it's very positive about it because most of the time people yeah you're of course everyone is really grateful to to be alive and so on but mm -hmm. uh, most of what you read and hear it's it's like people really really struggling and i think hopefully hopefully um yeah um there's it's not all bad yeah at yeah. least yeah 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 i think you're a good example uh of someone showing already now that there can be some good positives in it too yeah yeah um like if someone else finds that then it's yeah uh, then i'm all for it then it will make me feel very good mm -hmm. A last uh, question that I want to ask to round up the, uh, the conversation here. Is there anything, any last words or any last tip or piece of advice that you would like to share to uh, any fellow cardiac arrest survivor listening? Oh. I mean, you shared a lot of great things already, so if there's yeah, even well, more. I, I think just, I think just like, like what I'm feeling and I hope that maybe others coming along feel as well. It's just realizing that you actually got a second chance at life. And it's uh, like, it was a lot bigger chance that you would be dead than being alive. I mean, you're like only knowing that like 8% of people with uh, cardiac arrest out of hospital alive, uh, survives then you're like eight out, out of a hundred <clears throat> i mean it's an it's an just being there and reading that if you m made it then you're freaking amazing <clears throat> and you you got a second chance so so like use it use it well mm. i know i'm gonna yeah. yeah, I'm excited uh, maybe to have you on the show again in a year. Uh, yeah. Like, a, to, like a, a checkup episode to see how, how life has been, but yes. I'm excited yes. yeah, for you. Yes, maybe we can link up in when I'm in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be amazing because I thought yeah. you were going, going to be there in October or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like from, I think also it's so, it's, uncommon like you end up talking to someone in kind of yeah. are your own age and been through yeah. the same thing and also like of course i think um, i think your girlfriend was the one doing cpr on you my and, story is I mean, quite similar to yours because it was also when mm -hmm. i was asleep she also woke up from yeah. me making a lot of weird noises so yeah mm -hmm. it's, yeah they're gonna have a lot of, to talk about them I think so too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's chat about this uh, more because yes, it would be cool. Definitely. But yeah. Marcus, thank you so much for sharing your story.
All right, that concludes this conversation between me and Marcus. I really hope that you gained something out of this conversation between us and uh, yeah, that it can help you on this journey uh, after surviving a cardiac arrest. Now, to find anything mentioned in the episode, uh, check out the show notes, which are located in the description of this episode, or go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for Marcus. Don't forget also, you know, to leave a rating on whichever podcast app you're uh, using or uh, to also uh, leave a review if you can do that. Either way, you know, that, that would really, really help out this podcast so much and to spread out more awareness around surviving a cardiac arrest, you know, spreading out these stories and the information from cardiac health experts. So leaving a rating and a review would just, yeah, you will have a direct impact on spreading out the awareness more. So if you would take the time, thank you truly for doing that. With that, I hope that I get the chance to welcome you again on another episode. Until then, this is your host, Elis Fass, signing off. Bye, everyone. Oh, before you do take off, if you want to support this project, then, you know, you could check out our awesome merch that we have, uh, like this t-shirt uh, with a new design. I think now for spring and summer, and, you know, it's, you're looking for a new t-shirt, uh, this is a great time to buy uh, maybe this t-shirt. Uh, we have it in different colors, so there's options to choose uh, to suit that might suit your style better. Of course, we have other merch, like we have our Heart Warrior mugs that are, I mean, this one is also with the same uh, design as on the t-shirt, um, but we have the mug and the t-shirt also with another design. Uh, we have also a pullover if, you know, you want to pull over. Uh, so there's some options of merch that you can buy. If you're not interested in our merch, but you do still want to support the project, then you can also leave a donation. You can treat me on a virtual coffee. Now, I will not buy a coffee from that as I don't drink coffee anymore because of my heart disease, but I uh, will use that money to better this project. And know that you are also having a direct effect on you know, the awareness of sudden cardiac arrest as, you know, if I'm able to do more, I'm also able to spread out these stories, uh, do more events, just do more things uh, with the project. And with that, the, the awareness of cardiac arrest uh, can also be spread out more into the world. So yeah, really, uh, if you will either buy a piece of our merch or leave a donation, thank you, really. Now in the description, I will put a link uh, that will take you to the page where you can check out our merch or leave a donation. Or you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved to find the same page. Having said that, I hope to see you on another episode. Bye.